In this morning's Health Watch, portion size. We know obesity is a growing problem in America. There are plenty of people who have blamed that on the supersizing of our food. So <coughs> if losing weight is on your agenda, Consumer Correspondent Susan Copitz here. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, wish I, I, I wish I had water to give to you. <coughs> I'm choked up at the thought of losing weight. Take it away. <laughs> okay, so one of the keys to losing weight is eating less. And you're about to meet an expert who says you can still eat all the things you love, but you just need to downsize. And it may be easier than it seems. Portion sizes in this country are getting bigger. And it's no wonder Americans' waistlines are following suit. It's the seafood diet. You see it, you eat it. Nutrition expert Dr. James Painter has been studying human eating habits for more than two decades. How much bigger are portions compared to, say, in the 1950s? In the 1950s to now, it's at least double. And in some things, it's probably triple. Painter says Americans can lose weight and still eat the things they love if they downsize. Americans are eating out at an ever-increasing rate. They're in his documentary, Portion Size Me, two of his students went on a fast food diet for 30 days. They ate things like burgers and fries for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. A really big salad. And still lost weight because they controlled their portions. It all comes down to portion size really comes down to portion and we get fooled by portion by the things we choose to eat with and so if we eat out of something big we eat more if we eat out of something smaller we eat less so we put his theory to the test thank you for coming everybody we invited 10 people to an all you can eat ice cream social take as much ice cream as you want as much as you think you're going to enjoy then we split them into two groups oh, Oreos are the, best, yeah. the first group was given small cups small spoons and a small scooper they were offered toppings like chocolate and sprinkles and each bowl was weighed this group seemed to enjoy every bite <laughs> getting some ice cream ready then we brought in the next group. This time, they were given large bowls, larger spoons, and a larger scooper. And again, we weighed how much ice cream they decided to take. Finally, we brought the groups together. Does everybody feel like they ate enough ice cream? Yes. yes. And revealed the truth of our experiment. Here was your bowl and spoon. Group two, here was your bowl and spoon. In the end, the group with the big bowls ate nearly twice as much. You guys had the big bowls and you piled it on. <laughs> Are you surprised that your group ate almost twice as much? Well, if it was probably a bigger bowl, I think all of us probably would have been taking a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Painter says the lesson here is simple. Control how much you weigh by controlling how much you eat. Smaller plates, bowls, glasses, cups, you end up eating less, you don't know you're eating less, and you end up losing weight. And just by switching from a huge dinner plate like this one to a plate like this one can save you a bunch of calories and you probably wouldn't even notice. You'd be eating less and, and not know a thing. It's amazing what a great trick that does on your mind. It is important, though, to use a bowl or a plate of some kind when you're eating, especially something like a snack food, right? Right. So instead of eating out of the bag, you pour some chips into a bowl so you know that you're getting 10 chips. Mm -hmm. Because what most of us do, we start eating out of the bag and we just eat and eat and eat until we get sick. So if you pour it into a bowl, you'll know, okay, I've had 10 chips, time to stop. Oh, it's so hard to stop sometimes. It is so hard. But another way that can help you do that, you started keeping a food journal, which is one of the other recommendations. Yeah, to keep track of what you're eating so you know what you're eating every day. So I did a food log for the past week, and the folks at home, you can read it online to see what I've been eating. I notice I eat a lot of pizza, <laughs> which I'm not going to give up. But I also notice that, you know, it, it helps me keep track of what I'm eating every day. But also, because I'm keeping this log, I didn't want to write down bad food, so I stopped eating a lot of the bad food that I would normally eat, like a lot of candy. Like, there's some candy on my, on my food log, but um, not as much as I would normally be if you were If you weren't yeah. writing it down. And it's not, just, it's not just when you write it down and put it online for, say, our viewers to see at home, but people say that has the same effect on them, even if no one else is reading yeah, it. Yeah, because you don't want to look at your log and say, I am a huge pig. Look at all this junk I've been eating. <laughs> every day, right? Have you been looking so, at my food log? <laughs> no. But, you know, it helps. It helps a lot. Great, great tips. And easy for us all to implement. It's easy. Susan Copen, thanks.